particles are creative elements that are instrumental in both visual effects and motion graphics design, and can be combined into pretty well any effect. Fusion's particle system works both in 2D and 3 dimensions, depending on how you set it up. In 3D, you can embed it within Fusion's 3D system. This is another area where the value of Fusion nodes is very important for understanding the construction of particles. An important concept to understand is that particles will always require an emitter, a start point, and a renderer, an end point. Think of a particle flow as a complete thought, and if you look in the bin or tools menu, there are tools which are forces and other tools give additional control over the particle stream. Follow along and try this once you've downloaded your evaluation of Fusion. Click on the particle emitter and a particle render in your toolbar. This will lay the particle emitter and renderer down onto the flow. Now let's create a simple particle that emulates kind of a fire chasing smoky ring type of thing. It's important to turn off the fast viewer if it's enabled in your viewport. Select the control tab and open up the velocity control and set the velocity very low to 0.05 and the velocity variance to 0.1. These determine the initial speed of the velocity of the new particles. Most important, let's give an angle variance the amount of 360 degrees. This will give us rotational motion. Next, skip over to the style tab and set the style as blob. Open up the size parameter and set the size to 0.3 and the size variance to 0.2. Work specifically with the color over life wheel and not the top color wheel to your liking, but I wanted a pale yellow uh, to an orange color with an immediate cutoff to black. The transparency also matters, so I gave the pale yellow an alpha of 0.3 and the orange 0.2 and the black I made fully opaque with a value of 1. Finally, switch over to the Region tab and set the X offset to minus 1. Next, click on the Z rotation and select the expression and type in time times 10. Remember to click back on the flow so you don't add anything else to the expression box. Finally, adjust the X pivot to 1. Go ahead and click the play button on the interface. Now we have our flamey smoky ring thing. Finally. Jump back to the Style tab and play with the Fade In and Out sliders to adjust the head so it appears to be chasing its tail. Experiment by playing with other controls to see the results. Of course, more particle templates are available for download and you can use them in your own productions. Here's another simple particle setup that can either be used for visual effects or motion graphics. This is a simple setup and designed as a template for you to use on your own images. We'll start with a particle emitter and renderer, just like before. This time, let's jump right into the Style tab and change the style from Point to Bitmap. This will enable an amber input triangle so you can place bitmap image sequences of your own choice into it. Most important, change the animation parameter in this tab from over time to particle birth time. Next, jump over to the region tab and we'll change it from a sphere to a cube. This is so we could set up a nice stage for our particle system. So I'll just go ahead and choose a height, width, and depth of 5. Go ahead and find an image sequence. I'm going to use some photos from a trip to Africa. So if I hit the play button now, the particles will randomly be placed and cycle through the image sequence too quickly, so we need to add some more control. Jump over to the control tab and adjust the particle number from the default of 10 to 1. 1 will equate to 1 particle per image. If you run out of images and want a busier scene, increase that number. 
now set the lifespan to 500 so the particles last longer on the screen. I can use on-screen controls so that I affect the particle's velocity, position, or any other control I decide to add to it. By adding a camera, you'll certainly have complete control over your flight path through this particle cloud. Adding a soft clip to the end of the flow will allow for a better transition as the particles come closer to the camera and avoid a visual popping off artifact. This way I can fly through the particles with real predictability and modification capabilities including light, depth of focus, and clipping. Try additional forces into the particle flows and play with the adjustments to see the results. I'm going to switch over to a more advanced example of the same effect with a bit more animation and a couple of extra tools. One thing to take notice of is that particles need a chance to birth. So, if I switch over to the timeline, remember, the timeline is for timing, the effect starts at minus 103. What the world sees always starts at zero, but we can work in minus zero to give the particles a running start or a pre-roll. Feel free to download this particle cloud template and modify it as you see fit.